Hi, this is Mr. Max. I am doing my fourth test on AS level. Uh, and the topic I'm looking at today is uh, sequences and series. And the next test after this will be about sigma notation and sum to infinity. And what I'll also then do as a last test within this particular chapter will be a test squarely based on the binomial theorem. Right, so here you have a sequence where you need to find the value of p if the sequence is, in this first case, arithmetic sequence. So if it's an AP, then uh, I'll go ahead and say that is the first term, and that's the second term, and that's the third term, for example. So what is it that I can identify? I see my first term is log 2. I know that it is an AP. And if it's an AP, it has what we call a common difference, which is calculated by taking either term 3 minus term 2, should give me the same results as taking term 2 minus term 1. We could also write the other way around, like term 2 minus term 1 on the left, term 3 minus term 2 on the right, doesn't matter. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say, okay, that's log 2 raised to the power of p for my third term minus log 2 squared should equal to the second term again, log 2 squared minus the first term, log 2. When you are subtracting logs of the same basis, you know that you are dividing the numbers. So this is log, and then you can have 2 raised to the power of p here, and that is going to be over 2 squared. That should equal to log 2 squared over 2. Since we have uh, a log on both sides, and uh, we can just go ahead and cancel them. So at the end of the day, you are now left with 2 raised to the power of p over 2 squared equals to 2 squared over 2. Right, so here, there are many ways you can do this. It's totally up to you. Perhaps you multiply uh, throughout. So you have 2 squared over 2 on the side. But what you want to do is you want to get rid of that denominator there by saying times 2 squared. Okay, right. So from here, you have 2 raised to the power of p equals 2 raised to the power of 4, numerators there, upon 2. This gives me 2 raised to the power of p equals 2 raised to the power of 3. You're going to subtract the indices. Now, if the bases are the same, we equate the indices. So, therefore, in this particular case, p equals to 3. And that is the solution once the progression is said to be arithmetic. Now let's take the same sequence, and in this particular case, let's say this sequence is geometric. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm going to rewrite the sequence again. So it was log 2, log 2 squared, log 2 raised to the power of p, and so on. So you now also know that is the first term, the second term, the third term. We know what is the first term. It remains log 2. Now, in order for us to find the common ratio, you are dividing the second term by the first term. That should give you the same answer as dividing the third term by the second term. So, in this particular case, it's log 2 squared over log 2. should give you the same answer as log 2 raised to the power of p over log 2 squared. So, I'm just going to rewrite that. I'm going to say p log 2 for the side on the right using my power law over 2 log 2 okay power law over there equals to 2 log 2 and I put that also over log 2. Now if I have that case that scenario I can actually cancel this because it's the same number divided by the same number. This leaves me with p over 2 equals to 2 over 1. 
there is a one here in front that we do not necessarily write. So it's then very easy to see that in this particular case, P will be 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. So therefore, P is equal to 4 if the series or the sequence rather is geometric. Okay. Right. So let's go to the next question. The next question says you are supposed to find the number of terms. So again, we need to find the number of terms. What do we know? We know that it's an AP. What else do we know? We know what is the last term. The last term is 56, when it's given in this form. And the last term is also represented by T sub N. We know that then the formula becomes a plus n minus 1 times d should equal to 56. But we know what our a is. Our a value is negative 4. So I'm going to put negative 4 over here. Plus n minus 1. We need to determine our d value. Our d value is calculated by subtracting the second term minus the first term. Should give me the same answer as like third term minus the second term. Well, in this particular case, you will realize the answer is 5. So D equals to 5. You can go ahead and put it in brackets. Equal 56. So we're looking for the value of N. That's what we're looking for. The number of terms. So, straightforward. Negative 4. Multiply that over. That gives you negative 5. Multiply that over. That gives you positive 5. N, that gives you uh, equals to 56. So this is negative 9. Plus 5N equals to 56. 5N equals to 56 plus 9. This gives you 5N equal to 65. Therefore, N will be 65 divided by 5, which equals to 13. Good. That takes care for that part. The next one here, find the number of terms. Same scenario, but here we are saying this is geometric. So what I also intend to tell you is that perhaps you can see that um, this is the last term, which is the same as T sub N. And if it's a GP, T sub N of a GP is found by using that formula. So effectively, what this means is, um, maybe I can find another way to write 1,331. 1,331 is nothing but 11 cubed over Y to the power 6. Then I have A R N minus 1. So we are looking for the number of terms. We also now have to calculate our R value, and we know what our A value is. A is Y square upon 11. So A is Y square over 11. That is the value of A. Our R, we, sub, we divide term 2 by term 1. So term 2, for example, would be um, 1 divided by y square over 11. This division becomes nothing but the inverse of whatever is at the denominator, so it's 11 y square. So that would be my value of r, which is 11 y square. But you have n minus 1 equals to 11 cubed over y raised to the power of 6. Okay, so at the end of the day, I need to get rid of this y square over here. So the way I do that is I will multiply by the inverse here. So basically, this will cancel. So what I do on that side, I'll also do 
on this other side. So I'll be left with 11 y square n minus 1 is equal to, so you have got 11 times, this is going to be 11 raised to the power 4. This is y to the power 6 times y squared, that is y to the power 8. So just one more thing that I can do over here is I can take out, uh, let me first have 11 y square. I can take out 4. So I'll have 11 over y squared. And if I take out the 4, obviously 4, 11 raised to the power 4 will be 11 raised to the power 4. And y squared raised to the power 4, you multiply those indices, give you y to the power 8. The reason I do that is because you should see that the bases now are exactly the same. And if the bases are the same, I drop those bases and I equate the indices. And uh, if you equate the indices, you get n minus 1 is equal to 4. Therefore, n is equal to 5. Okay? And uh, that is the required solution. There's no need for you to use logs and stuff like that. You should be able to get to that answer. Right. Question 4. This one here is for four marks as well. Now, if the question says the fourth term of a geometric progression, so this is the formula for a geometric progression. So the fourth term would be a r then that four minus one. So the fourth term will be a r cubed, which in this case they are saying is five cubed x raised to the power 5. So that's the first condition. So if they are now asking me the seventh term, the seventh term will be a r, but this is going to be 7 minus 1, so it's going to be 6 here. And it's then 5 raised to the power of 6, x raised to the power of 8. So what I will do here is I will take to the, the term 7, or I will say a r to the 6 over a r cubed is equal to what you have on top for the other one the other one is equal to 5 cube x raised to the power 5 over 5 uh, I have the other way around so just to make sure I write the correct stuff okay so this one is 5 raised to the power of 6 x raised to the power of 8 and this one is 5 raised to the power of 3 x raised to the power of 5. Of course, the a's they cancel, and this will be subtracting those indices over there. This will leave you with um, 5 cubed, and if you subtract here, you're going to get 8 minus 5, that is going to be x cubed. Right, so this is r cubed equals to 5 cubed x cubed. There's something I need you to see. See that the indices are exactly the same. So if I the indices are the same, I drop them. Therefore, r equals to 5x. That's what my value of r is. So they want us to find the common ratio with it. Now we need to find um, our first term. So finding the first term. You substitute this value of r either into um, these two equations. I'll choose that equation. So that will be a, and my r is now 5x raised to the power of 3. That should give me 5 cubed x to the power 5. Right, remember I am looking for the value of uh, a. So this here is the same as a, in bracket is 5 cubed x cubed equals to 5 cubed x raised to the power 5. To have my a alone, I will divide 5 cubed x raised to the power 5. I will divide it with this business over here. So that will be um, the value of 5 cubed 
x cubed. Well, if you do that, you're going to be left with x squared. Therefore, the first term is x squared, and the common ratio is 5x. Quite straightforward. Always remember to give your final answer so that the examiners can also know what is your final answer. Okay, then now you're told to find the first three terms. Right, so now they want us to find the first three terms of the progression. So we know what the first term is, we also know what R is. So uh, the first term, uh, as you have, you have got X, that's the first term, I'll just write here. So the second term and the third term. So you multiply by 5x, okay, in order for you to get the next one. So you're going to multiply here by 5x. You multiply here by 5x. So x times 5x, well, that gives you 5x squared. Then if you multiply that, it gives you 5 cubed, x cubed, and so on. Alright, so this is actually 5 raised to the power of 0, 1, uh, and so on. Okay, alright, so um, 5 times 5, there should be a little square over there. Okay, a little square, and then you get your terms. Alright, so therefore, the first term, uh, if I have to write it neatly, the first term is x followed by. 5x squared followed by 5 squared x cubed. I think you can see a pattern. 5 cubed x to the power 4. Let me just continue up to here. 5 to the power 4, x to the power 5, and so on. Then uh, uh, that is how the sequence would be going. But we only require to have these three terms, which is 1, 2, 3. Question 4. The last terms of an arithmetic progression, the first and the last term, the first term is a, negative 24. The last term is 72. We know it's an AP. Then the sum of all the terms, we don't know how many terms they are, is 600. So what is it that we know? we need to find um, the number of terms. So when we know the last term, the last term can be denoted by T sub n, which is a plus n minus 1 times d. In this particular case, it will equal to 72. We also know what a is. a is negative 24, n minus 1. The d value, we, uh, we can also... Um, we cannot calculate it, not really per se, and that, that will give me, is it uh, 72, right? So if, if I look at uh, the other formula, because I'll get back to this one to see that because there are too many unknowns. So S sub n, when I use n over 2 and a plus l, where l is the last term, I can actually find this particular uh, one much easier. Then it will have everything that I need. So n over 2, that will be the first term, which is negative 24, plus the last term, which is 72. This should give me 600. Of course, now it's much easier. You take those two values. So there's no need for me to use that particular formula. So I can just go ahead and, and also clean that formula there, right? Um, so using my calculator quickly, I've got 72, take away 24, okay? That gives me 48. So I'm going to have, maybe I just, just write it up here. Let's just, uh, um, okay, let's see. Where it brings me.
yeah it's one of those things the software will keep on giving you a headache especially if you are pressing something untoward invalid operation okay all right so we have it so we'll continue where we left off just bear with me while I try to fix this issue over here let's just say close and so we can start it up again no problem you can always start it up again um, yeah as you can see it's also quite very late that I'm doing this video but we are nearly there at the end of it just bear with me we have a little bit of a system flaw this is restore and we go back good all right so what we have now is we have uh, n here is going to be 48 inside and I have 600 I'm going to multiply that by 2 so that's 48 n is equal to 1200 so now you get that value by dividing so the correct answer here will be 1200 divided by 48 okay that gives you 25 therefore there are 25 terms so the number of terms in the progression so therefore there are 25 terms within the progression right now when they ask us to find a common difference so um, we now know a is minus 24 we also now know that n is 25 we also know the last term the last term is given to us the last term is 72 so I can go ahead and write 72 here so there are there is now enough for me to use either formula so I'll use the T sub n formula where it's negative 24 plus 25 minus 1 because n is 25 times the d that we don't know should give you 72 this is much easier to arrive at the answer so this is going to be 24 d equals to 72 add 24 so this is 24 d when you add you get 96 and obviously if you are now to divide 96 that will give you d is 96 divided by 24 i think that answer should be 3 4 rather so our common difference therefore our common difference is nothing but 4 okay question 5 in an ap the third term um, is 14 so it's an AP the third term is going to be a plus um, 3 minus 1 times D I get 14 so this is a plus 2 D equals to 14 I can go ahead and write it as a equals to 14 minus 2 D then uh, the sum of the first eight terms the sum of the first eight terms is equal to 148 that implies that 8 over 2 2 times a plus 8 minus 1 times d should give me 148 that is 4 over there 2a plus 7d equals 148 so let me just go ahead and clean this up by dividing throughout by 4 if you divide by 4 you're gonna have 2a plus 7d here 148 divided by 4 because of that one that is there so when you have 148 and you divide it by 4 of course that gives you 37 so my other equation is 2a plus 7d equals 37 so at the end of the day I have two equations I have this equation over here I have this equation that I wrote like that 
and I want to use the method of substitution in order for me to find the first term as well as the common difference. So I'm going to then substitute the value of a into this other equation. And we know that the value of a was nothing but, um, if we have to go back to it, it was 14 minus 2d. So 14 minus 2d. Of course, that's 28 minus 4d plus 7d equals 37. You have got uh, 28 goes to the other side. 7 minus that is 3d equals 37 minus 28. And if you add uh, 2 plus 7, you get 9. So this answer here will be 3d equals to 9. Therefore, d will equal to 9 divided by 3, which equals to 3. Now I need to find the value of a. Then the value of a, which is 14 minus 2 times whatever the value of d is, in this particular case, is equal to that. The answer is 14 minus 6. And if you have to add, um, then you get 8. So now you can actually go ahead and answer and say, therefore, a is equal to 8 and d is equal to 3. This is uh, ordinary level mathematics, and you should be quite aware with that. Right, question 6. How many terms in the GP will be added so that the sum of the first integer, or the sum of the first n number of integers, the sum of that is greater than 2.65? So we know it's a GP. We know that a is equal to 2. We know that r will be a half divided by 2, okay, which will give you nothing but 1 over 4. So if r is a half, then we use the formula s sub n, so r, a here. So r is like a fraction, so I'm going to say 1 minus r to the power n over 1 minus r. So obviously, this must be greater than 2.65, something worth pointing out. Since we are actually looking for n, uh, and that n is an index, it might imply that you are going to work with logarithms, okay, in order to find that unknown, okay? And there's a few things that you need to know when you're dealing with logarithms, but um, we'll go and continue. Let's just substitute in the values. Our a is 2, our r is uh, 1 over 4. Okay, all of this, 1 minus 1 over 4, greater than 2.65. All right, so if we just have to quickly clean this up. If you have 1 minus 1 over 4, that is 3 over 4, okay? So 3 over 4 here, so that's 2, 1 minus 1 over 4 to the n over 3 over 4 greater than 2.65. I'm just going to come here. I'm going to multiply this because 2 divided by that is the same as um, 2 times, now it's 4 over 3, 1 minus 1 over 4 raised to the power of n, greater than 2.65. All right, so once you just clean that up, I get 8 over 3, Then I have 1 minus 1 over 4 should be greater than 2.65. Now I need to get rid of that 8 over 3. So I'm going to say 1 minus 1 over 4 raised to the power of n greater than, if I take that 2.65, and uh, if I multiply that by the inverse of uh, 8 over 3, that will be 3 over 8. Of course, if you take that 2.65 and you times it by 8 upon 3, you will get 106 over 15. All right, so um, 106 over 15. I'm going to leave it uh, as an improper fraction. 
1 minus 1 over 4 raised to the power of n. So getting rid of this one, I have negative 1 over 4 raised to the power of n. Um, so if I have a positive 1 here, I am going to subtract that 1, but I'm not going to write the number as 1. I'm going to write the number as 15 over 15 because it's another clever way of writing the number 1. So um, let's see, because I am freelancing here without a calculator. Let's bring in the calculator rather. So I get 91 over 15. So negative 1 over 4. Greater than, I said, 91 over 15. Now there is a a, 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 a change and a swapping and a swapping of the formula here. Because there's a negative here in front. And in order for me to deal with that negative, I need to sort of multiply or either divide by negative 1. It doesn't matter. If I multiply by negative 1 here, I must also multiply by negative 1 there. Then this inequality sign will reverse. So at the end of the day, um, I need to go back and see because I think I might have a little bit of a problem. Um, our R is 1 over 4. Our A is 2. Okay. Um, punching everything in the formula, 1 minus 1 over 4 to the power N, that is 3 over 4. Um, yeah, let's take a couple of it again. This is a, a value that I don't like there. So you have got, um, I'm here now, 2 divided by 3 upon 4. That gives me my 8 over 3. And then I went and multiplied, I said 3 over 8 times 2.65. Oh my goodness. Um, And I got 159 over 160. My goodness. So this is where the whole rubbish is starting because this is giving me not 106 over 15. So I, I saw my mistake there. So 159 over 160. So let me just correct it here as well as here. Just take the whole thing off. From this black part because I was now really worried about my certain answers so um, I have 1 minus 1 over 4 raised to the power of n is greater than this is uh, something that becomes um, 159 over 161 Five nine over one hundred and sixty. Now, if I take away one there, I'm going to have one fifty nine over one hundred and sixty minus one. Okay, so this is where I'm going to have a negative number. So I have one fifty nine over one sixty. Take away one. Okay, you get a negative answer, and that is the reason I was looking for that. So at the end of the day, I have a negative here. 1 over 4 raised to the power of n is greater than negative 1 over 160. Now, there is a negative 1 here. And if I was to divide by this negative 1, the inequality sign will change. Okay? So everything becomes positive now. So it will be 1 over 4 raised to the power of n. The inequality sign is going to reverse, becomes smaller than and this 100, 1 over 160 also becomes positive. Okay, that's me like dividing or multiplying by negative 1. The problem is because I decided to write this, um, this part of the equation on the left, I will have to switch this inequality sign again when I take logs. Because here's the thing that you need to know the log of a fraction will always be a negative number. So, n times
times log of 1 over 4. This is what I mean. This here, log of a fraction, is always going to be a negative number. And because of that reason, you are essentially dividing by a negative number, which means this inequality sign should switch around. Okay, so log of 1 over 4, you'll see that it gives you a negative answer. Can you see that? So because now you are dividing by a negative number, the inequality sign has to reverse again. So there's like a double um, reverse. But as long as you follow uh, the steps, whatever you do, however you solve it, should get to some value that makes sense. So let us see. We say log 1 over 160 should be divided by log of a quarter. We get 3.66 something. So 3, 3.66 so on. And the number, a whole number that is, because n should be a positive whole number, right? And a whole number that is greater than 3.6 will be 4. So that would be the solution to this question um, on the last part. Right, I know it has been haphazard looking at the time. It's uh, 2 a.m. But I thought I should uh, share this one and also finish it so that at least you have something to refer back to. Also on the test, if you were to get a copy of it, you will see that I'm also including um, the list of formula that they will give AS level in this. And so as I go on with the topics, I will be snapping out those formulas that they give you that is relevant to the particular topic. So if you were to forget the formulas, you can use them. All right, stand by for the next test on binomials or on sub to infinity as well as sigma notation.